Hello, welcome to the Thursday, November 2nd, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Frankfurt, Germany. In a diary today, Rob is giving us a line-by-line advice on how to configure SSH properly on Cisco iOS. Now, we all know that you probably do want to disable SSH version 1 and the like, but in his guidance, he actually implements guidance given by NIST as to how to properly configure SSH key strengths and the like. So this really goes a little bit more in depth and if you're using Cisco equipment, you may want to take a look because really all you have to do is more or less copy and paste what Rob offers here. Now, probably changing your default credentials is a good start to secure SSH and sadly people still haven't learned that lesson and some users of Ethereum mining equipment running the ETH OS operating system learned that the hard way by having their mining equipment hijacked. Apparently someone is scanning the internet for systems running this operating system and then logging in using default credentials and then changing the wallet address to mine for the attacker's wallet. Luckily so far the profit made in this particular endeavor isn't all that great about six hundred dollars is what Bitdefender is reporting in their write-up of this incident but of course it's very possible that there are other scans out there for other wallets that haven't been discovered by Bitdefender's research. Now Kaspersky is reporting about another very simple trick in order to steal cryptocurrencies. They call it Crypto Shuffler and what it does is it's malware that sits on the victim's computer watching the clipboard. Whenever it does see something on the clipboard that looks like a cryptocurrency wallet address, it will replace it with an address owned by the bad guy. And of course since crypto coin addresses are usually rather long and complex copy paste is probably the easiest and safest way usually if you're not infected with malware to make sure your Bitcoin or whatever cryptocurrency is going to the right recipient. And Bo Bullock and Michael Felch at Black Hills Infosec came up with a neat trick to add Google Calendar events. If you add a Gmail user to a Google Calendar event, then there is an option to actually not notify that particular user of the event via email, but just silently add the event to the calendar if the recipient hasn't disabled the automatic adding of calendar events. This of course can easily be abused for phishing, given that users often aren't really trained to scrutinize links in calendar events the same way they scrutinize links in emails. It's often much easier to get the user to not only click on the link but also trust the link enough to then enter a username and a password or do other bad things like download attachments. Just remember the last time you probably joined one of those go to meeting events. It made you download the latest and greatest version of GoToMeeting. Now, Black Hills InfoSec did add this as a feature to their Mail Sniper tool, which is an open source tool that aids in social engineering. And talking about social engineering, getting ready for the holiday online shopping season, Securing the Human did publish their November Ouch Security Awareness newsletter focusing on on how to shop online securely. If you aren't familiar with the Ouch newsletter, it's written for the average computer user, not the average listener of this podcast. So it's a great tool to, for example, hand off to friends and family.
And I had a couple of listeners note that certain podcast players had issues with this podcast for the last two weeks or so. Best I can tell so far is that it looks like Lipson, the company that we use to stream this podcast, has upgraded finally to no longer allow SSL version 3. And apparently there are still some old podcast listeners out there that only support SSL version 3 so probably time to upgrade to a more recent version of your favorite podcast listener I'll look at it still more but if you had any issues the last two weeks and uh, you're still somehow able to listen to this podcast uh, please uh, let me know and well that's it for today thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow bye